Rightio, so definitions along both sides that we need to learn. We've got to learn these words that work well because better than I've been up here. Formation, ionisation energy, atomization, electron affinity, that's the thing. And we are going to use all of these to find that boy there. And the one we're going to do first of all is the easiest one, and that's going to be sodium chloride. Now, this is like, do you remember the Hess cycle? It's like a mega Hess cycle. So you're going to need quite a large space to be able to do it. I'm going to go down. I'm going to start here. But you need to give yourself some space for a line Wait, is that... there. So we are going to build up a mega cycle. Now, they always follow the same procedure. So we're going to do the simplest one first, which is sodium chloride. We're then going to do a slightly more complicated one. We've got to bear these definitions always in mind. So, I'm going to start off, I'm just going to put, I'm going to do it with sodium chloride. So this is example one, NaCl. First thing, make sure you've got the formula right. If you stuff your formula up, your born answer is going to go crazy. So, that's my formula of sodium chloride. One sodium, one Cl. So, on the first line, I'm going to put my elements in their standard state. Sodium is a solid. What about chlorine? It's gas. It is gas. How do I always write chlorine? Cl2. Cl2. How many do I need? Half Cl2. Because I only want one chlorine in the end. So, and that's a gas. In proportion, how are we going to put sodium? Right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to atomise sodium. So, on the next slide, I'm going to change sodium gas into so sorry, sodium solid into sodium gas. So I changed that sodium gas. Oh yeah, just bear with. I haven't done anything to chlorine, so that stays the same. Sodium goes up. So this is delta H atom of Na. So just put a little. Right. So I've atomized sodium. I'm now. I'm going to carry on with sodium. I need to now ionize sodium. So this is going to be delta H first ionization energy of Na. So I've now gone from sodium gas to Na plus gas plus a half Cl2 plus an electron because I've removed the electron there. I have done this. I've gone from Na plus to Na plus gas plus an electron. So that's the delta H atom of Na then? Yeah, this one, delta H first ionisation energy of sodium. Do you have to put that space in the right to call it in a second? Oh, you're right, well done. Yeah, and a half CO2 gas. Is it gas? Yeah, it's a gas. I'm now going to atomise chlorine. Why do I need to atomise it? It's already in the gas state. What am I going to do to it? I'm going to take that chlorine. Yeah, I'm going to break that molecule up. Now this line is going to go, I'm going to take it a little bit higher. It's going to go, this is as high as I'm going to go. I'm going to go all the way up. So I'm going to go on to Na plus gas plus Cl gas plus an electron. I've taken a half Cl and turned them into chlorine atoms. So this is delta H atom of a half Cl2. I've atomized my chlorine. I've taken chlorine molecules. I've taken half a mole of chlorine molecules and now I've got a mould of chlorine atoms. Does it matter what way we do these tests? No, it, well, it makes sense. You've got to atomise before you ionise, because yeah. I've got to get it from a solid to a gas before I can go here. But if I wanted to do chlorine first, I could. 
I would do the metal, I try and do it metal. The reason why is I'm now going to start coming down. The first electron affinity, I've now got, I've now got Cl gas and an electron. So I need to do this boy here, I need to do the electron affinity. So if I do this, an example of electron affinity would be Cl plus an electron to go Cl minus gas. And that, my arrow is going to come down. The reason why it comes down is it's actually an exothermic process, it's a negative number. So this is delta H first Ea, Ea's electron affinity of Cl gas. And I pop that electron onto that. So I have now got Cl, Na plus gas plus Cl minus gas. I've taken that void from the bottom of there. Yep, so I'm now going to put my lower line down. Right at the bottom here is NaCl solid. Sodium chloride as a solid. So I can now fill in my last two arrows. This arrow on the left hand side going down, what does that represent? It represents its exothermic grill but I've got sodium solid plus a half Cl2 gas becoming sodium chloride. Which, which one is this? Um, it's after my second thing. means I'm going to do the ions. This is the elements, taking the elements oh, in the standard state. Brilliant formation. This is delta H formation of NaCl. And this boy here, that's lattice. Delta H lattice of NaCl. Taking the ions in the gaseous state to become the ionic solid. Right, so let's put some numbers on this. So, we have been told the following. We know, well, you will be told this in a question. Delta H formation of NaCl equals minus 411 kilojoules per mole. So, yeah, so if you add this on, atomization of sodium is equal to plus 108 kilojoules per mole. The first ionisation energy of sodium is equal to plus 500 kilojoules per mole. Now you're not expected to know these numbers. The atomization of chlorine is equal to plus 121 kilojoules per mole. And the first electron affinity of chlorine is equal to minus 364 kilojoules per mole. So let's just have a look. If you notice any positive number, my arrow goes up. Any negative number, my arrow's pointing down. So a positive number means my arrow goes up. So I generally go up, 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 up. Electron affinity have come down. And then these two guys come down to give me that. What don't I know? I don't know this one here. So that's what I've got to find out. Okay, so we need to work out this guy here. So delta H lattice is equal to, now this equation will always work for you. It equals that number. So it equals delta H F minus, and then you put everything else in the brackets. So, delta H atom of Na plus delta H ionization energy of Na plus delta H atom of half Cl2 
the plus delta H first ionization energy of Cl. So let's bump those numbers in. Delta HF is minus 411. Minus, now where people go wrong is they stuff their brackets up. So keep everything in your bracket. 108 plus 500 plus 121 minus 364. Yep, sorry. Oops. And it should First, be minus, no? Electron And it should be minus. No. Okay, so this equals minus 411 minus 365. And that equals minus 776 kilojoules per mole. The way to work this out, and I say people get freaked out, put all these numbers, it's just that number, and then just add them all up. These you will add together, oops, these you will add together, that's a minus, so it's that 108 plus 500 plus 121 minus 364 gives you 365. Do that, and then that will all work out to give you minus 776. What do you notice about that number? Well, first of all, the sign it is really, yeah, it's exothermic and it's big. It's very, very exothermic. It's a large negative number. Now, when you start comparing these, you've got to be careful. You don't just say, oh, it's really, it's really big. You've got to say it's a very negative number. So you have to say it's more negative. So if I compare it and get some, which is minus nine, 900 kilojoules per I say, Minus 900 is more negative, it's more exothermic, things like that. People get themselves in a bit of a muddle for that. Right, so that's the easy one. Should we do a slightly harder one? 